Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Committee of the Whole Council meeting Thursday of Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. Uh, everybody, please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilmember Coyle. Here. Councilmember Deal. Here. Councilmember Gomez. Here. Councilmember Joshi. Present. Councilmember Lombardi. Here. Councilmember Patil. Here. Councilmember Sandelsky. Here. Adequate notice, please. Adequate notice of this meeting as required by the Open Public Meeting Act of 1975 has been provided by special notice that was published in the Home News Tribune and the News Indian Times on April 25th, 2019 and posted Main Lobby Missile Complex on that same date. Good evening, <coughs> Good evening everyone. Uh, thank you again for coming out tonight. Uh, this is the continuation of the Committee of the Whole meeting uh, from Tuesday, May 14th. Just to do a quick recap, um, we started our, um, we started with our witnesses last meeting. We invited 11 individuals. Um, those who attended were Paul DiStefano, Beth Maroney, Keith Hahn, Sylvia Engel, and Shivi Prasad. Those that were not in attendance were Shara Kamad, Jerry Shi, <coughs> Kulguni Patel, Shannon Pang, Mahesh Bhagia, and Dhiran Amin. We think it's vital and important that everybody who's invited come and share with us any information that they might have. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, turn over to Councilman Lombardi to explain what steps will be taken in an effort to have those individuals who did not attend cooperate with our investigation. Councilman Lombardi. Thank you, Council President. Um, as Council President Gomez indicated, tonight we are holding our second committee of the whole proceeding. Uh, there were individuals that were subpoenaed to come in and provide testimony as to what, if any, knowledge they possess regarding the racial flyer that was distributed in November of 2017. Uh, there was also one person that was asked to voluntarily come in and testify for tonight. Uh, there were three individuals that were subpoenaed tonight. First is uh, BOE President Jerry Shi, BOE member Shannon Pang, and EDO Chairman Sharik Ahmad. With regard to Mr. Ahmad, his attorney did write to our attorneys that he could not appear tonight as this month is Ramadan. So we will work with Mr. Ahmad's attorney to have him come during the meeting of June 27th. Uh, with regard to Mr. Shi, we received a letter this afternoon from an attorney indicating that Mr. Shi was not available tonight as he will be out of town. Um, I hope that in the future we will get more notice of Mr. Shi's availability. Uh, Mr. Shi was invited to the meeting on the 14th and we are not advised until the 13th that he would not appear by the Board of Education attorney. In this instance, the subpoena was sent on May 9th. It was personally served on Jerry on May 10th. However, it was not until today that we received the letter from his attorney. I would ask Mr. Malik Schmidt uh, to reach out to his attorney and make sure that Jerry is available <coughs> for the June 27th meeting. Also, um, it appears from the letters that Mr. Shi and Mr. Mahesh Bhagia have the same attorney, so uh, while you're reaching out to him, see if Mr. Bhagia is available on the 27th as well, Mr. Malik Schmidt. Understood, will do. Uh, with regard to Ms. Pang, I see that she just walked in, uh, so we're looking forward to hearing her testify as to what she knows. Um, for, the witness, for the witnesses that are here, uh, last time we were here, I went over some instructions uh, for those of you who did not hear the instructions or are going to testify tonight, I'm just going to briefly go over those instructions again. Uh, there will, this will be a question and answer session. There's a court reporter present, and the committee's questions and your answers to those questions will be taken down by the court reporter. At some point in time, the court reporter prepares a booklet called the transcript, and that transcript will have an exact verbatim record of all the questions and your answers to those questions. The court reporter will ask for your name and address. The court reporter will then swear you in. So although you're in council chambers, your answers are cons considered sworn testimony and have the same effect as if you were testifying today in front of a judge and a jury. There are certain rules that should be followed. First, listen to the question. If you don't hear or understand the question, let the person that's asking the questions know, and I'm sure that committee member will be happy to repeat or rephrase the question. We don't want you to start to answer if you're not sure what the question was. 
we want to know what you know as well as what you do not know. So if we were to ask you a question, you truly have no idea what the answer is, you should say so. Nobody wants you to guess or make up an answer. We only want to know what you reasonably know. If you can answer a question with a reasonable estimate or an approximation, that is permissible. We would ask that you do so. Just identify your answer as an estimate or an approximation so you're not held to an exact answer. We should do our best to speak one at a time, so let the committee member asking you a question to finish the question before you start to answer. This way there's a clear record. Likewise, the committee members will do their best to wait until you have completed your answer to the question before asking another question. If at any time you feel you were cut off and you weren't permitted to complete your answer to the question, just signal to us and we'll stop and let you finish your answer to that question. Finally, we should all avoid slang. So if your answer is yes, say yes. If it's no, say no, as opposed to uh-huh, uh-uh, uh, shrug of the shoulders or movement of the head. Uh, this is for the benefit of the court reporter and for the benefit of there being a clear record. So I would ask any committee member asking the questions that if a witness responds with an uh-huh or an uh-uh, for you to confirm that was an uh-huh yes or an uh-uh no. Those are the instructions. I give it back to you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilman Theo. Thank you, Council President. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming back. I noticed a lot of folks were here last night, so it's almost a continuation in some sorts that the uh, Council Chamber seems to be a pretty busy place nowadays. Um, one of the things that happens with these Committee of the Whole, which are, are rare, as you know, they don't happen quite often, is that uh, you get into it and you really don't know what you find sometimes until you get into it and they go in different directions. And one of the reasons why you do enter into it is because you don't have the information, so you want to find out. And once you open it up, things start to happen. And one of the things that uh, we're a little um, struck by is that uh, we sent out a bunch of invitations, and we received, and these invitations are, can you come and explain to us uh, any information you may have about this racial flyer, racist flyer? And what we got back was a lot of, we, we got back a lot of letters from lawyers, which was kind of interesting because we're sending a letter out asking you to come by and the letter comes back and it's a lawyer's letter. Um, one of the interesting things that happened was that it came out in testimony that the Board of Education attorney had advised Board of Education members uh, that because of the zoning board lawsuit that they should not attend and you know, we have our own thoughts about that because the zoning board, first of all, the zoning board uh, lawsuit is, was authorized by the Board of Education maybe a couple weeks ago, and we passed our Committee of the Whole resolution on February 27th, months before. Uh, those people in the chambers who know me know that I have been speaking about this continually on a bi-monthly basis for a year and a half. And I vowed, as w when it came out, that we would take all necessary steps to find out who was responsible. So it's no secret that the council was doing a committee of the whole or that we may go there at some point. And we formed our committee of the whole in February, in February 27th. So, um, you know, that, that, that's pretty interesting that we, we put out the letters for an invitation and what we get back are a lot of uh, lawyer letters and the Board of Ed Education attorney for the Board of Ed advises the Board of Education members who were invited to come here not to come because of the zoning board lawsuit. Well, there, we, we have a couple problems with that and one of them is, and it came out actually from a resident because again, this is a fluid process. A resident uh, brought up the point at one of our council meetings, I don't want to pay my tax dollars to have, to have somebody represented by the Board of Education attorney for something that is not a Board of Education uh, issue. And we do not believe this is a Board of Education issue. We believe this is an election issue. We always believed it is an election issue. So we did some research, and what we found was uh, something pretty interesting. It's a court case from 2006 and the city of Elizabeth, uh, Antonio Rivera versus Elizabeth Board of Education. And interestingly enough, the cases are similar in that short in June of 2006, shortly before the primary election for Elizabeth City Council, a letter went out to residents 
with Board of Education letterhead on it. And basically, it was, it was uh, seen as a racist letter because what it said, and I, I can quote the letter here, <clears throat> it was geared towards Hispanics and to get the Hispanic vote out in the election. It said it was the letter directed the Board of Education president in quotes, this is from the letter, inspire parents to commit to putting up political signs in support of our Hispanic candidates so that the Hispanics will come out and vote for our candidate and ensure a low turnout of the Italian vote. So this is seen as a racist f letter that goes out and the Board of Education president and the superintendent, because it had Board of Education letterhead on it, um, had the Board of Education lawyer help them with a case, with a lawsuit. They filed a John Doe lawsuit. Uh, to make a long story short, because there's several pages here of legalese, uh, it was found that they shouldn't have had the Board of Education attorney represent them in any way on an issue that was not a Board of Education issue. This was not gonna show up on any Board of Education agenda anywhere, anytime. This was an election issue. But they used the Board of Education attorney to help them and they entered into a lawsuit. And at some point, because it went on, it went on for a little while, uh, the point was raised, two points were raised. Number one, just as we just said, this is not a Board of Education issue, and you shouldn't be spending Board of Education dollars to represent the uh, board president and the superintendent. And two, a vote was never taken. A formal vote was never taken, which is a violation of the Open Public Meetings Act. So long story short, the superintendent of Elizabeth and the Board of Education president had to pay back $63,000 to the Board of Education for the funds that were used in a lawsuit that was not authorized fr from the beginning and was determined that it was not part of the Board of Education business. The money that they used, the Board of Education, the money that they used uh, for the lawyer, uh, 52,000 of the 63,000 came from a grant, a grant from the Department of Education. And the rest of it uh, was, was money that they used from their budget. So, um, I, I want to bring that up because the argument came up, and we, we questioned it when it happened, why is the Board of Education law attorney representing or giving legal advice to the people we're just inviting to come here? Nobody has made any determination or, you know, no, uh, no verdict has been rendered here. That's, that's not our job. Our job is to get the, get the information out. So we, we couldn't understand why the Board of Education attorney was representing or giving advice to, these, to the Board of Education members. And as it came out, no vote was ever taken. So that remains an issue that uh, is open and I wanted to share that with you as we got started tonight because it's my hope, because I think some of the residents who were here at the first meeting were here and some of the meet, uh, residents who were here at the council meeting when this issue came up were also here. It's my hope that the taxpayers of Edison are not going to pay for a Board of Education attorney to represent Board of Education members in a situation where, first of all, nobody's been sued or anybody's been accused of anything, and, uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with, with Board of Education uh, routine business, nor is it approved. I'm just hoping that happens. I wanted to bring that out up front. Thank you, Council President. Judge Matoshi. Uh, Council President, just to be clear, we had invited formally several individuals that uh, Councilman Lombardi just mentioned. Uh, however, there was one volunteer that we had requested to come to my knowledge. Uh, I've just come to learn that he's actually here, and that is Mr. Comer. So, uh, Mr. Comer, if you can also, if you could come to the stand to testify. Just for the record, this is Postal Inspector David Cole. Yes, sir. <coughs> Council President, is he a new is he a new witness or is he someone that's been notified? Have He's been asked. He uh, has accepted to come. 
No. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. The, and he's the postal inspector okay. handling the case. And we were notified he was going to be here tonight? Excuse me? We, we, was the council notified he's going to be here tonight? Again, as I mentioned at the initial discussion, the subcommittee's handling it. So the subcommittee has handled just like all the other witnesses, all the invitations. Council President, can someone answer my question? Whether he was, whether the council's been given notification. I'm, I'm fine, he's sure. here. I just want to know the process, that's all. So yeah, th I, I, if you can bring on someone last minute, I'm fine with that. I just want to know the process so I can do the same. That's all. Councilman, we did not know whether the U.S. Postal Inspector would come. Obviously, he is an ideal person to testify. Um, we are happy and very thankful he was here. He was, for the record, he was not a part of the list that our attorneys had sent out. He was a volunteer that chose to come. So he is here and we're happy to hear his testimony. I'm sure he knows a decent amount. Just for so, the record, uh, Council President, to Councilman Joshi, for the record, could we have volunteer witnesses appear tonight? Is that what you're telling me? I'm, I'm fine with the answer, I just wanted the answer. I, I'm not sure where you're getting at, but he is the U.S. Postal Inspector that, to my knowledge, handled this case. Thank I you, Council President. Okay, I think I there's see. a difference. Mr. Comer, can you state your full name? David Anthony Comer, Sr. Okay, and what, who do you work for? What is your position there? Oh, I'm sorry. You need to be sworn in. Yes, I did. C-O-M-E-R. I'll give you my work address. 21 Kilmer, K-I-L-M-E-R Road, Edison, New Jersey, 08899. Thank you. And who do you work for? What is your position and exact title there? I work for the United States Postal Inspection Service, and okay. I am a postal inspector. And how long have you held that title for? 17 years. 17 years. What are your job responsibilities, and did you serve in any uh, relevant prior role? Um, currently, I'm part of a security team. My team handles uh, suspicious items, uh, powders, liquids, unknown parcels, eccentric mailings, uh, as well as workplace violence involving our employees. Okay. Mr. Comer, what, if anything, did you know about the 2017 uh, racist flyer? I can put that up for Exhibit A right here. Uh, it was brought to my attention that it was uh, sent through our Edison, well, it was being delivered through our Edison main post office located on Route 27. Okay. And when did you first come to learn about it? How did you get involved in this case? I was contacted by the station manager um, and I went and collected some of the refused um, flyers and started trying to see if I was able to trace back uh, where they might have originated from. Okay. Do you know how many flyers were sent out or went out or, or attempted to go out? There were more than a thousand that were attempted. A thousand. More than a thousand. Do you know who they were sent to or the addresses? Were you able to verify whether it was a certain demographic or not? No. No. Can you explain how uh, pre-sorted U.S. postage paid permit mailings work? Uh, it was not uh, pre-sort, prepaid. It was, uh, each of those flyers had a uh, forever, uh, a flag forever stamp attached to them. So somebody literally put stamps on each one of those. Okay. Do you know the individual that had purchased those stamps? I cannot say who purchased the stamps. I can say that there was an individual that within three days of the mailing uh, made a purchase of $3,920 at the Edison Post Office located on Route 27. And they were the same exact stamps that were used on the racist flyer. Can you state the name of that individual? Uh, Shara Kamad. Okay. Do
Do you know who owns P.O. Box 10153, uh, People for Progress? Based on postal service records, I was able to pull up the, um, the P.O. Box information. Uh, I'd have to look at it. Uh, about, I gave a copy of it to someone. For the record. If the stenographer could place in front of the witness what's been pre-marked as Exhibit K, I would appreciate that. Mr. Inspector, if you could take a second to, uh, to review that, I would appreciate it. Okay. Um, according to Postal Service records, the P.O. Box was opened on September 19th, 2017 uh, by Cesar Suarez, uh, who, according to the address <coughs> listed on the P.O. Box application, was 304 Hannah Road, Edison, New Jersey, 08817. Uh, the Postal Service policy to verify who is renting a P.O. Box is to get a photo identification. So in this case, he provided a driver's license and a vehicle registration card to prove his identity. And the box was actually closed on April 11th, 2018. Have you ever met Cesar Suarez? No, not, the, not to my knowledge. Were you ever able to interview Mr. Ahmad? Uh, I had attempted to interview uh, Mr. Ahmad along with Detective uh, Jeff Tierney from Edison <coughs> Police Department. Uh, he was uncooperative. When you say uncooperative, what do you mean exactly? He said that his attorney would reach out to me when he was ready to talk to me. Are you familiar with the name Andres Morales? No. Because the P.O. Box that you have mentioned, P.O. Box 10153, was, it ties back to Andres Morales on People for Progress. So my point is that Cesar Suarez, whoever this, this guy is, um, the name that was used on People for Progress mailings was Andres Morales with that same P.O. box that you mentioned. So you don't know who Andres Morales is? No, I do not. Okay, because that's a possible bank fraud, just letting you know. Um, <coughs> Council President, I don't have any further questions at this time. I don't know if the other committee members do. Council President? Yes, sir. I have a few questions for Mr. Comer. Mr. Comer, first of all, thank you for coming in, uh, for volunteering to come in. No problem. Um, you said that you worked for the United States uh, Postal Inspection Office for 17 years? Yes. Um, can you take me through your titles over those 17 years? Or have you always been just the United States Postal Inspector? Yes, it's just a variety of teams that I've worked on, but it's always been a Postal Inspector. Okay. Um, now you mentioned that you had attempted, uh, with the assistance of Detective Tierney, to reach out to Mr. Ahmad for an interview? Yes. Who, if anyone else, um, did you attempt to interview during your investigation? Uh, Jerry Shee. Okay. And were you able to interview Mr. Shee? Uh, no, he was uncooperative. Okay, and when you say he was uncooperative, what do you mean? Uh, I went to his residence. He was working on his vehicle. I uh, told him that I wanted to speak with him regarding the racist flyer. Uh, his response was he was going out of town and that he had no time to talk to me. So I was amenable and said, okay, gave him my business card, told him to please reach out to me upon his return. He said, sure, okay, and I never heard from him again. What were your findings with regard to the flyer itself? The flyer was sent to our, um, our lab for analysis. Uh, it's being, it was sent for uh, print analysis as well as latent print analysis. Uh, the latent prints have not come back yet. 
Uh, the print analysis basically came back that it was an inkjet commercial style printer. Um, they weren't, there were no defects in the printing, so they were not able to say whether it came from the same exact printer for each one. Uh, the same goes for the card stock. The card stock did not have any abnormalities in it, so they were unable to discern whether it was the same card stock used for each one. Was a determination made as to whether um, the flyer or flyers were printed at a home or office printer versus a printing company? It said that it was a commercial, the inkjet was commercial style, so I would assume that it was done at an office or. When a flyer is printed on a commercial uh, printer, are there any identifying marks that would, um, like, like a serial number or some type of identification that would show which printer it actually came from? That was uh, one of the reasons why I sent it to our lab. Uh, they had told me that uh, some commercial printers actually, or some home printers, will actually put a serial number on, but unfortunately, whatever printer was used in this case did not encode a serial number. Now, the, you, you had testified earlier that the um, stamps were individually placed on each flyer? Yes. Um, was any fingerprinting analysis done? Uh, it's still being conducted. Uh, our lab is in um, Virginia, so the problem is is that we have homicides, burglaries um, going on, so it, it doesn't rise to the occasion of a quick response from them. Do you know when it went out to the lab for testing? Um, it's been more than a year. Okay. Have, well, when was the last time that you had reached out to the lab to make a determination as to the estimated time of completion of the analysis? I spoke to them two weeks ago, um, and they didn't have an answer, because like I said, we're a federal agency. We have homicides, burglaries, um, suicides, everything. All that stuff goes to the lab. We have one lab. Okay. Uh, now, you, you spoke about um, the cooperation uh, with the Edison Police Department. Um, uh, actually, you mentioned Detective Tierney, correct? Yes. At some point, um, the investigation was taken over by the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. Is that correct? Um, I know the Attorney General's Office had gotten involved at one point but I'm not sure where it went from there. I haven't spoken with them. Have you been in contact with any investigator uh, from the Attorney General's office? Not within the past nine months. <coughs> so approximately nine months ago, you were contacted by the Attorney General's office? Or well, you we, we spoke uh, via email. Okay. Um, is it your understanding that the Attorney General's office is conducting an investigation? At that point, yes. Okay. Um, but you haven't heard anything in the past nine months? No, I think they were waiting on all of the lab results to come back. So the latent print analysis as well as the ink and cardstock analysis. Okay, so as far as you know, it's still an, investiga an active investigation. They're just waiting on the uh, analysis to be completed from the lab? Yes, as far as I know. Be besides what we've already spoken about, um, did your investigation reveal anything else with regard to the flyer? Um, the addresses that the, uh, the cards were sent to weren't sent to individuals. Uh, it was basically current resident, so it was something that was bought. Uh, those addresses were bought online. Do you know the source of the online website where they were purchased from? No. No, because uh, Vistaprint does it. There's a lot of different places that will sell, um, sell the addresses. Is it possible, or I don't know if your office had looked into the mailings itself, were, were they, or the addresses, is it possible that they were uh, political mailing lists? It could be. 
Uh, they okay. weren't addressed to as far as So tomorrow. they were not EDDM? Uh, no. Okay. Mr. Inspector, you said there were more than 1,000 flyers sent out, is that right? Yes. How were you able to determine that number? Um, based on a portion of my office being filled with these, um, I, I'm giving an, uh, an approximation. Uh, I have four flat tubs full of uh, the mailings sitting in my office. So you collected quite a few of them? Yes, I did. Do you know how many you collected, roughly? I didn't count them. Okay. Do you know how many were actually mailed out and how many actual re residents received these? Uh, no, I do not. What were the names of the individuals that yourself or the detective tyranny tried to interview or try, tried to speak to? Um, Shara Kamad, Jerry Shi, um, Detective Tierney had spoke to uh, Falguni Patel uh, without me. Uh, pr I think it was prior to me getting involved. Um, let's see. I think that's the only people that we tried to reach out to. Uh, the reason, uh, do you want me to clarify? Or? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason why um, we wanted to speak with Jerry Shee is because he was on the flyer. Uh, he was a victim. Um, uh, um, Falguni Patel was already interviewed as a victim. Uh, Sharik Ahmad, I wanted to speak to him to find out uh, what was the pur pur uh, purpose of a $3,920 um, stamp, stamp purchase of flag stamps that are the same exact stamps that were used in a racist flyer. So my question for him would have been, what were you buying all those stamps for two or three days before a racist political mailing came out? But I was unable to, he was uncooperative. Okay. How is it that you knew that he made that purchase? Um, the Postal Inspection Service has access to all of the financial transactions that occur within the Postal Service, as well as um, I'll leave it at that. We, because I, I can't give too much information, but any financial purchase that's made at the post office, I have access to. Suffice to say, it was uh, the finances were analyzed. Yes. Thank you. Okay. To your knowledge, did Jerry Shee ever reach out to or speak to any law enforcement? Not to my knowledge. Uh, I spoke with uh, Detective Tierney. Uh, probably a couple hours ago, and he said that he never heard from uh, Jerry Shee at all, other than that day when we went to interview him. Stenographer, if you could please place in front of the inspector what's been pre-marked as Exhibit L. Mr. Inspector, if you could take a moment to please review that document. Okay. Do you recognize that? Uh, yes. And what do you recognize it to be? This, this is a photocopy of the original receipt. It's a duplicate receipt for um, dated October 28th, 2017, 1.25 p.m. Uh, of a stamp purchase of $3,920 for 80 coils of um, stamps. Uh, there's 100 stamps on each coil so that would be um, 8,000 stamps. Um, it identifies the last four digits of the credit card as 0936. Based on the time of the transaction, the finance number of the station, I was able to go through postal databases and recover the credit card number that was used to purchase, to make that purchase. At that exact time, then we subpoenaed the bank to get the owner of the credit card, which turned out to be uh, Shara Kamal. And you said previously in your testimony that those were, quote, the same exact stamps that were on the flyer. By that, I assume you meant the same exact type of stamps. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I just want to clarify for 
Edison TV and the viewers that we can't put these exhibits up because they were given to us um, by Mr. Comer. We don't, we don't have them available right now, but we received both of them over here. Yes, this, this is going on the record. Councilor? I just wanted to clarify, the councilor mentioned type of stamps. First, I'm glad you're here. And I, <clears throat> I wish I was more prepared, but you were the key person we're looking for to be here, and this is uh, really perfect timing. Um, the question he mentioned before, and I only have this one question, they purchased the stamps uh, on the 28th, but you said they use forever stamps. And uh, for the forever, for the forever stamp. Yes, forever okay. is a type uh, yeah. uh, type of stamp. Um, it's basically the stamp purchase was the U.S. flag uh, coil stamp. Okay. I say forever stamp because no matter what the value of, no matter what the postal rate is for that stamp, it mm -hmm. always stays at that price that they paid for it. Like they don't have to put an extra one cent or two cent stamp. That's why we call it a forever stamp. Just so I can get clarification, we know that he purchased flag stamps. Yes. Is there anything that you can give me specifically about the stamp that's on the mailers that you discovered? Is there any type of sequence number that you know it's this stamp that he purchased, or that no. they're just the type? No, it's just the type. So at this time, we know that he bought forever stamps. Yes. Correct? Yes. And there were flag stamps. Yes. And on the flyer, what type, was it a flag stamp on there as well? Yes, it was. Okay, so we definitely have a, a type of stamp, but we have, there's no serial numbers. I was told that we can get a serial number or some more specifics of each stamp has a, quali a quality or qualification number on the stamp. No, there's no, we don't serialize the stamps like that. Okay. Um, even with, uh, for postal tracking, they just send it um, in a bunch, and then they accept it for what it is. So the proof you have is Mr. Ahmad purchased stamps on 1028. He purchased the type of stamp, which is a forever flag stamp, but you can't spe be specific whether that stamp has a sequence to the stamp that was put on there, uh, some type of material number that proves that that's the stamp. Correct. Okay. I, I cannot just, uh, prove that, yes. Yeah, we, I was in the impression for about six months that there was a stamp that you can clarify. Each stamp is marked and has a seal and a sequence said, you know, just for Homeland Security, but there is no proof to that. No, that would be wonderful, but no. Okay. It's probably something we can do sometime soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have, I'll wait to my questioning, but I just wanted to get to that point that the counselor made. Thank you. Council President. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Comer, um, did you, do any type of investigation as to whether there were any other large purchases of these types of stamps in or around that time frame? Yes. Okay. Were there any? No. Okay. Thank you, Council President. Nothing further. Uh, anything else from the committee? Anything else from any other council member? Is there any other testimony you, you would like to provide that would lead to another individual. Do you believe that this was done by one individual or multiple? Is there any other evidence that you can give us related to anything you know for how many individuals were involved? No. Okay. Thanks. No other questions? Council okay. President. I was yielding to Mr. Deal first. Oh, no. I okay. Um, thank you, Council President. Again, just winding back. Uh, I appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, my only question was just not being prepared because you are the key person a lot of us have been waiting to speak to. Um, and I also just wanted to clarify the process of how we have people volunteer to speak. So no way uh, am I disappointed you're here. I'm actually pleased. So thank you for taking the time to be here because what you say today, it really could corner this uh, case of where we want to be. Um, we went back to identifying with how many you collected, how many flyers you, you collected? And uh, you said about a thousand. Approximately. I Is did not. I did not count. Okay. So. But you roughly know what a tub. We call it a tray, a tub. Yeah, a flat tub. A flat tub. Approximately, what, how many do they hold? 
a lot. Depends on what, <laughs> depending on what's is sent in there. Okay. Do, is it fair to say you have under a thousand, over a thousand? Oh no, it's it over a be, thousand. It could be two thousand. It could be. Okay. It could, it could be six thousand. I. It could be six thousand. Okay. Well, then that's, that changes a lot. There's so six thousand. Um, and how many stamps does the, the thirty-nine hundred and twenty dollars get you? It's eighty rolls. Eighty rolls of one hundred. Uh, stamps on each roll, 8,000. 8, stamps, okay. Okay. Can I just go into the fundamentals of mailing with you and, and how uh, we look at things being mailed and how we identify things? I'm, I'm getting to the stamp and I'm just really disappointed we can't find out that stamp that are on there. Okay, so. Walk me through what comes through your mail house in bulk mail every day. Just a few main items that come through every day. I need you to clarify. That use regular stamps, not oh, prepaid okay. stamps. What, what okay. comes through regularly that is used? Okay, so regularly? basically people come into the post office or they go to a blue box and drop mm -hmm. letters into the box. The letters are then transported uh, by hamper into a station, it's commingled with other mail, then a truck driver will come pick up that mail and take it to a processing facility and it will be sent through a machine and processed. Uh, the stamps will be canceled and in some instances the mail will be barcoded. Now, of the flyers that you found, were any of them canceled? Yes. That's what I'm trying to identify is, yes. could, you, uh, I think could you identify where they were dropped off? I mean, uh, I mean sometimes when you, that's they sometimes give you an indication of what, what region it was you know, mailed from or where it was. Um, and you don't have, if you don't have that answer tonight, obviously it, it could, may take some time. But They were all canceled at the Dominic V. Daniels Processing Facility located in Kearney, New Jersey. That, that makes it very interesting, Connie. Um, so would, one person would have to drop them off. And how does that give me a geographic territory? If I was to drop something off in Kearney, it would have to be in the township of Kearney or in the region of Kearney? Or no, it could be dropped off anywhere. It could be dropped off in Old Bridge, East Brunswick, commingled, and then it's just transported to Kearney for cancellation. So is that a normal process for my mailer if I dropped in Edison at a, post, at a mailbox in Edison? It goes to Kearney then back? Yes. So it doesn't go to the local post office uh, on Kilmer? No. Everything goes to Kearney? Yes. So we can't place to say it's a person from Kearney that did this? It, it's just anywhere Correct. in the region? It, Correct. Just the convenience of the mail drop. Not that I would uh, suspect that the person doing this, if they were mischievous, they'd want to go out of their area to drop it to make it look like it came from a different air town. Um, okay. Um, going back to the stamp again, is it unusual for someone to come in and buy uh, this amount of stamps throughout a year during campaign season? Does it ever happen someone buys four thousand dollars worth of stamps in your in your history? This is October twenty eighth. It's I think a few days before an election. Okay, so you have to understand that I'm an investigator, so I'm not really involved with um, like mailing and I'm on the law enforcement side of the house. Would so you, okay, that's fair. Would you be able to run a history, if I asked you to run a history of sales taking place two weeks before election day, would you be able to run a history of how many, what I'm getting at, where I come from in, po in politics, doing mailers, we buy stamps all the time. And then what I'm getting at is that, is it uncommon, could you be specific if you were to at be look into it to find out whether or not stamps are bought in bulk, you know, prior to an election? Oh yes, I could go through a postal databases, yes. And in, in, your, in your 17 years experience, would you say that it's totally unusual five days before an election that a purchase of 8,000 stamps would be made? This is the first time I've come into contact with this. Okay, and if you were to pull a history for me throughout your region, would this be the only purchase or are you not sure at all? I'm not sure. Um, 
typically with large mailings, the Postal Service will offer a discount and it would go through our bulk mail center. Um, and also political flyers, uh, we have a political, uh, a political rate. Um, it's considered fourth class mail. So it would not, uh, like most political mailings are mailed without uh, postage. Is that an answer you can find for me at a later date? No, yeah, absolutely, ten, I can just, research I, I it. Think 10 days prior to the election of a history, of a five year history of who purchases stamps and whether this is completely unusual behavior. Um, now the other part too is going back to the actual stamp. Um, you mentioned that this is the exact stamp. Can you clarify to me again? The exact same exact type. Stamp? So it's a US flag stamp? A forever stamp. Yes, a US flag forever stamp. On, the, on each of the flyers is a US flag forever stamp. So in your history, how could we associate specifically that the stamps that Sheriff purchased are the specific stamps that were placed on there? Oh, you wouldn't be certain. able to. That's why I attempted to interview him. Okay. So other than him saying that I specifically put them on, you can't tell by any other, other code? No, Nothing. other than latent prints, if whoever mailed this got their prints on, on it or got a hair fiber underneath a the stamp, then we could run DNA uh, or latent print. And that's still open for investigation? Or yes. Hair got under there or something? Yes. And that would be very conclusive? Yes. Okay, but the actual stamp itself, because when you say the word exact stamp, I just don't want to confuse those who are listening. This is just he purchased the type of stamp. Yeah, the, okay, so clarification would be the exact same you, type of stamp that was used. Same type of stamp. And again, there's, when you purchase stamps, I had this feeling, you know, through others, that when you buy a roll, the roll has some type of code sequence in there that you know came from that. No. And today you can't identify that. Could you do it through any other channel in your, in your, in your database? No, we don't. We do not serialize stamps. Is there any other expert that can testify to a stamp of wh who purchased that specific stamp that was placed on a card? Um, uh, clarify that. For I me? mean, um, could you? Is there any other person in your facility or any expert that you're aware of that has a measurement to prove that exact stamp that's on the postcard on the flyer is the stamp purchased by? this purchase here? Uh, no, there would be nobody. Okay. Because that was the golden answer we were all looking for. And it's an answer I've been hearing for about nine months that we have the person and the stamp and we can identify the stamp on there. But all today we can identify is the type of stamp. Correct. I still, I mean, I know I'm not blaming you, but I still don't believe that's possible, how we can't today, in, in all the technology we have, with the history of what's happened in um, different mailers that were sent to different uh, political situations, the, uh, the, the terrible things that were mailed out that we can't pinpoint a stamp today. I, I just wanna, you know, in the interest of time, I wanna be very respectful to our speaker right now and the only other question that I have is Caesar Suarez uh, you said that the post office was open which which uh, post office was this PO box opened in or what what facility it was I know that I'm um, it was opened in the New Brunswick post office. Um, or, let's see. You know what, I can't, oh okay, it was, uh, I think that it was opened up at the um, post office located at 21 Kilmer Road. Uh, because the information that I received 
uh, on the PO box came from the supervisor at that at that station. Okay. So it was uh, the New Brunswick. It's the New Brunswick annex located at 21 Kilmer Road, Edison, New Jersey. Okay. And the reason why I'm asking is because up till now we have, at least from what we gather, we we haven't been able to verify whether Andres Morales ever existed, but. Caesar Suarez opened the P.O. box in Kilmer Road. Yes. Okay. And would have to have done so in person, is that correct? Yes, along with identification, because they're required to see photo identification. Okay. Uh, do you know how often, or would you be able to look up perhaps at another date, how often Caesar Suarez uses P.O. box or for, for mailings? Uh, clarify that? How, how often he actually showed up to use this? Because this is an Ed Edison resident. Do you know how often he would have used the P.O. box itself? Would you be able to look that up? No, because the uh, P.O. box section is open 24 hours a day. So you can go in with your key, get your mail, and leave anytime. Okay. I, I think we have to look into it. Caesar Suarez. <clears throat> Anybody yeah. else? Council President. Yes, sir. I just have a quick follow-up question. Um, it was mentioned about today's technology. I mean, I work at an office that sends a couple hundred letters out a day, and my office actually has a postal machine where the stamp is actually printed on it. Um, is it abnormal that someone would buy stamps in bulk and place it on each individual uh, flyer? Most bulk mailings, would you agree or disagree, would be uh, go through a, some sort of machine that would uh, print the stamp on it? Uh, for a mailing of that size, I would say that it's more efficient because you get a discount to <coughs> use uh, Pitney Bowes machine, which those are traceable. Pitney Bowes, uh, I think Heller is one <laughs> of the other ones. Uh, but yes, those are traceable. Council Sorry. President, <clears throat> Mr. Joshi, I wasn't finished before. I have a few more questions. Go ahead, Council um, Thank you. Going back to the, um, and I want to also talk about what Mr. Lombardi just mentioned as well. But first, just walk me through this Caesar. I know I just got this Caesar Suarez. This is the document of his registration of that P.O. box? Yes. Um, it's first I heard his name. Um, I'm confused. What date was this open, this box? September 19th, 2017. Okay. Okay. And then it closed as well? There was a date it closed? April 11th, 2018. And when was the uh, flyer sent out? What date was the flyer sent out? November 1st, 2017. That's the cancellation date from the post office. And forgive me for not knowing some of the, the answers here, but on the racial flyer, is this the P.O. box that's on the flyer? Uh, how, are we, how are we correlating this, this post office box with the, with the uh, flyer that was up before? Oh, I, I didn't correlate it with okay. the flyer. That's just for people for progress. Okay. Um, and the gentleman, when he walked in, is, did he give you, obviously give you documents. Is that's what, I can't read this, but everything's on here, his name? Yes. Okay, and who he is. And have we called him in? Have you ever called him in? For any mm, reason? No. Did you have any reason to call him in? Uh, no. For an association with this particular racist flyer that we're trying to find out, you had no reason to call him in? This is just tied to people for progress for. Yes, I was just asked to look up a PO box. For people Sorry. for progress. I think for other things that were sent out. Okay. Now, going back to stamps purchased by people and, and the relevance of doing bulk mail and using the type of speed um, stamps that you have in your office, like Mr. Lombardi said, is there any reason why people buy stamps? Uh, 
and use stamps. I mean, is your, I guess what I'm getting at, when I send out some things, I buy a stamp. Is it unusual I buy stamps because it has a better look than a machine quality? People open up the mail for their purposes. So in, in, in my history, I've seen 25 years of politics, I've seen this buy stamps and do envelopes last minute because we like to use an actual stamp, a flag stamp. It gives another meaningful, gives meaning behind the, a personal, because it makes it more personal. Would you agree that people buy stamps to make it personal? Give it a personal touch? I can't answer for other people. Okay. Because what I'm getting at is that um, it's challenging to put your finger on a person just buying stamps, is what I'm getting at, and not using a, a, a fast track system. You know, and, and what I'm getting from Mr. Lombardi is that you know, because Mr. Mogg didn't choose to send it through a system. He bought this for the reason to hide that. But people buy stamps for a lot of reasons. And I'm just trying to clarify that those who, you know, people buy stamps, it's a flag stamp. It's, it's an election time. Flags associate with, with elections. Does any of that make sense to you? Yes, flags would be patriotic, yes. Okay, I'm just. But Councilman Coyle, I think what the gentleman testified before is that's the information that he was trying to get from Mr. Ahmad. That's yeah. the intention of him. What I just want to share, uh, Council, Council President, is that the association between buying a stamp and bulk mailing to push out 8,000 pieces, I can understand there's a faster way, but other people have a, during the campaign can have a personal interest in buying a flag stamp. I've witnessed Dr. Pettinini buy them for decades. And I don't think there, I think there's a few councilmen up here that can say that we used to put on hundreds of stamps. So, okay. Sorry, wait, sir, sir. Okay, I'm just trying to identify the stamp. Sir, please. Sir, please. Uh, I am not here to defend him. I want to find the person. I, I'm just. Gentlemen, please. Councilman Coyle, please, sir, for the purpose of uh, the inspector's time, I know you, you've asked several questions several times, so. Thank you, Council President. What's that? Anybody else? Just one last question. Were, are you allowed to, or if we wanted to, see uh, which addresses those, the boxes that you have, they went to? We just want, we would want to identify whether they were targeted to Chinese or Indian people. That, that's what we know so far. Yeah, the council would be free to uh, look at all of the mailings. I okay. have no problem with that. Great, thank you. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Councilman Deal? No. Inspector, thank you very much for coming out and taking the time tonight. We appreciate your help. I don't need, I can go, or? Yes, sir, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Council President, yes, sir. Uh, I would request a quick two-minute recess, given the information we just had. Um, if that's possible, it's been an hour. I'd just like to recess for two minutes. And I think I'll allow the teleprompter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to soon. Deal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council President. Um, at this time, we see that Sh Shannon Pang is in the audience. Um, we would invite her to uh, come up and testify, please. I do. Uh, Shannon Peng, 56 Phillip Street, Edison. If you can pull the mic a little closer to you, ma'am, please. You can pull it at the moment. Yeah. Is that good? Okay. <coughs> so. Councilman Deal? Uh, Before Councilman we start, can, can I? 
Is this the time for me to read my opening statement, or should I wait? Sure. Uh, I don't yes. know how this goes. Sorry. Yeah, actually, Mike will read off. She she said she doesn't know how this how, how this goes. So if you want to read off the introduction part again. Oh, uh, Ms. Pang, were you present in the room when I provided the instructions? I thought you were. Yes, yes, yes. I'm Did you understand those instructions? Yes. Do you need me to repeat no. any of the instructions? No. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Did we, sure. Did we get an appearance from who's the person with Ms. Pang? Yes, of course. It would be my pleasure, Councilman. Mark Colello, 395 Franklin Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey. I'm here representing Ms. Pang. Thank okay. you very much. You're an attorney. For welcoming me. I am. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Colello. And I, I took a slight to this. To oh, no. I, I just uh, asked. Sorry. Yes, I am. Okay. Sure, you may read your opening statement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Um, at the onset, it's my sincere hope that the individuals responsible for the racist flyer are identified. I found the flyers very disturbing and truly unfortunate. At the same time, it's my hope that any investigation is transparent and not political. It should not be weaponized for political gain. It's also my hope that any investigation that is conducted by this body centered on the truth. And let me be clear, any insu insinuation that I have any relevant knowledge regarding relating to the racist flyer is false. Similarly, any insinuation that I'm part of the People for Progress group is also false. My role in 2017 campaign was limited to that as a volunteer. I mainly knock on the doors for Team Unity as the public issues that they sought to address, especially overcrowding of our schools and the allocation of our tax dollars, are issues that I'm very passionate about. As some of, of you know, may be aware, our schools are severely overcrowded due to the continual approval of multi-unit residential home without regard to the capacity of our schools. Our classrooms continue to be underfunded. Our students are suffering. I was disappointed with inaccurate statement, intentionally or not, by witness preceding me that were factually not true. I think the committee as well as the public deserve to know the truth. On May 14th, Ms. Maroney said in her testimony, testimony that during one of the board meetings in 2019, when Ms. Han and Ms. DiStefano came to talk about the racist flyer, I was sitting next to her and admitted to her about something. First of all, Ms. Mr. Han and Mr. DiStefano did not come to the board meeting this year to talk about the racist flyer. They talked about the racist flyer last year, October last year, 2018. All board meetings are recorded, so and I can confirm that. Second of all, the seating chart is set at the beginning of the year and it stays the same during the year. So during the entire last year, I was not sit, sitting next to Ms. Maroney. Ms. Chivi Prasad was sitting in between us. Third, the video would show that during that, in, that meeting, that entire public meeting, I did not speak one word with Ms. Maroney. While everyone was wanted to declare in that meeting that they have nothing to do with people for progress, why in the world would I open up to her and quote unquote admit to her something that who I was never a friend with? I just find that hard to very hard to believe. I understand people mix dates, mix up dates and times, and sometimes. If but if Miss Maroney could not even remember when and where and how this incident took place. How can she manage to remember the quote unquote exact word that I, that I said? And this is a sworn testimony and she's making serious <coughs> accusation to someone. I believe now we all see how credible this accusation are. Um, setting aside the factually incorrect testimony of some witness, I do want to say how grateful I am to the residents of Edison who have given me the opportunity to serve on the Board of Education. I did, during the past 2.5 years on the board, I did work diligently for the benefit of our children and our taxpayers. We have saved the district millions of dollars by firing, overcharging vendors, and switching to new vendors. We have reduced computer usage in elementary schools, promoting instructional lectures. We get better textbook and curriculum. We redesign, redesign the grouping procedure to help more students 
getting into the honor classes. And we retained good, hardworking teachers who otherwise might be let go. I can proudly say that during my time on the board, I did not cut any backroom deals. I fought for what I believe and what's best for our students and residents. Thank you, that's all. Ms. Peng, you stated that you had no involvement or knowledge of People for Progress. Were you affiliated with People for Progress at all? Because per your, for your early in no. your testimony. I believe I, what, what, what is your question? How are you affiliated with People for Progress? I am not affiliated with People okay. for Progress. Did you have, to our attorney, can you put up the exhibit from People for Progress? I think you're referring to Exhibit C, is that correct? Correct. Or, excuse me, I think it might be Exhibit uh, Exhibit D here that I've just put on the screens, the excerpts. I have copies, and if the stenographer could place in front of the witness what's been pre-marked as Exhibit D. <coughs> Ms. Pang, you just stated you had no involvement or anything to do with People for Progress. This email is your email, correct? Yes. And it was sent to Paul DiStefano, yes. Okay. Can we put the following exhibit up? And I, I just want to state that this email, ha this email has no people for progress on it. Okay. Can you, this was dated October 9th. Can you put the following email up? This email came out a week later from People for Progress. It is almost identical. Can you explain this? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Are you asking my client to explain someone else's intentions? I don't think that's a proper question, and she doesn't. Listen, I'm the one asking the questions right now. I understand that. That's fine. You don't want her to answer, and that's okay. As far as I know, these two mailers are the same. I, I understand that, Councilman. Okay. But so the fact the question's that question's improper, though, Councilman. So you you sent. Ms. You're Peng, her you to get in someone else's head. She can't do that. The councilman's referring to what's been pre-marked as Exhibit E. If the stenographer could place that in front of the witness, I think that would help inform the discussion. He's up on the board. Ms. Peng, if you could take a moment and review Exhibit D and E next to each other. I don't have an exhibition. I'll stop talking. Um, Sir, Council, I believe we have two side-by-side -side ones. Can we put that up online? We can flip between D and E. And I'll note for the audience that what is on the PowerPoint here of D and E are excerpts from those exhibits. The exhibits are multi-page exhibits that don't fully lend themselves to being placed on a PowerPoint slide. So on October 9th, Ms. Peng, you sent an email to Paul DeStefano, which was a mock-up of this particular email, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. And just so you know, I'm looking at this. They are not identical. They're Someone said they are identical before, but they're not. I mean, the pie chart is there. The pie chart is identical. The cartoon picture is identical. The word, the structure of the email are not identical. If you look at the exhibition, I'm looking at it right now, it's not really identical. But the, and the, yeah, the, go ahead. What you sent to Mr. DiStefano was a mock-up, correct? It was not a finalized email. On a, I don't know what that means, what's a mock, oh, I sent it to him. He is the one who's campaigning, he is the candidate. I am just a volunteer. Both of us have access to this email that we sent. Both the sender and the recipient would have access to this email. Whatever he does with, whatever he does with it, I have no idea. Who I did think you that's a question to him, not me. He, again, it's not my decision, he's the candidate, I'm not. Who are you working 
on the mock-up with? A mock-up is yeah. a draft. So who are you working with to get this together? Paul. Paul Di Stefano. I remember the meeting we had. You want me to? S no. So th this email, this email sent to him and only to him. Do you guys know why? Because he's the reason for this email to be generated. We had, he's the candidate, I'm just a volunteer. We meet regularly during that campaign time frame. We bounce up ideas <coughs> talking about, you know, how to campaign, what's the, uh, how to do this. And Paul, on various occasions, told, um, like, block parties, meets and greets in someone's houses, talk about the, his story about his children, how his daughter has been mistreated, retaliated by the union, how his son was forced to resign from the coaching position in our school. I remember clearly when I first heard those story, I was almost in tears. I was telling myself this guy sacrificed so much to be in this, to be a board member. Where, when you were coming we up, have to I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting you, but I want to get back to my point. When you were coming up with this draft, you sent it to Mr. DiStefano, correct? I didn't come up with this draft Okay, who myself. came up with it? We were working together. Who's I we? was going to get to that part. Who's we? Interrupt me. Okay. We have been, as Paul DiStefano mentioned, there was, we have met in someone's house, I think it's Mahesh's house, um, if I remember correctly. There were uh, dozens of people coming in and out during the night. I don't exactly remember who, but Paul was there. Paul told this story about his children being retaliated by the union. Everybody was so rallied up, so touched. We wanted to help him out. We talk about different ideas. We talk about get make Paul making a YouTube videos, broadcasted, getting interviewed by newspapers, sending message to the parents because we think the public needs to know this that he sacrificed so much in order to be a board member. So we talk about different ideas. We, we even talk about the pie chart. We, we talk about what message to send to the parents. We talk about the pie chart. We searched for cartoon pictures, for that cartoon pictures. We even laugh at the pictures. It was a great team working night. So who was and working on putting this particular email we all, together? We were all there. Who was I, all? Me, Paul, I think Jerry was there. I can't remember who else because, as we said, there were dozens of people coming in and out. But I'm sure Paul was there because this is his story. This is his night. <coughs> and I was just a volunteer to make a summarize and send it to him. Why did I send it to him and only him? Because this is his story. He's the candidate. He needs to approve what to do with this. So you sent a draft, I don't you get sent to this draft to Mr. DiStefano, and if we can go back to the other exhibit. Several days later, when you sent the draft to Mr. DiStefano, the same, perhaps not the same. It's not the same. Okay, that's very similar, a very, very, very similar email came out from People for Progress just a week later. It's not even very similar, by the way. It's only the pie chart and the cartel. But is, is there a question? But is there a question there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there a question? I have a couple of questions. If I uh, and let Joshi, me ask you why? Why the question is directed to me? Because you're the, the one that is testifying right now. Okay. I think uh, some people, some other people, also need to answer to that question. And they will. I'm not the only one who has access to that email. The email was sent from a sender to a recipient. Uh, Ms. Pang, I have a couple of questions. You just mentioned um, other people should be called to testify. Who are those other people? Because we may call them for the June 27th meeting. I don't know. Paul, maybe. Well, Paul already maybe. testified. You did said you there are other that people. Did you ask question then? What did he do with that email? Okay. And if we, I believe we did ask the question, but if we need to, we'll recall him after okay. your testimony. Thank you. But who besides Paul, you said there are several other people that should be heard. 
who besides no, Paul should be? That. No, I didn't say that. I okay, said so there's maybe no one else. else needs to be. Because this was sent me, between. Me, hold on. The statement was perhaps you should call other people to testify, okay. meaning, of course, there may be other people that have information that's interesting to the council. My question is, do you, are you aware of any other person that should come in and testify? She already stated, Councilman, that she doesn't, other than Paul, she doesn't know anything. Okay, so the only other person that you're aware of that should come in and testify is Paul, correct? Correct, because the email okay. was only sent to him. Okay, now the email was sent to him from whose computer? My computer. Okay. Was the pie chart and, and the cartoon that is the same on both flyers, was that created on your computer? Was, it, was, it was a pie chart we saved from the internet. It, it was not created. It's not my, this is not original work. Okay. But did you copy and paste the pie chart from the internet to an email and the other cartoon character did you put that in an email, copy and paste it, and send it to Paul? I think so, yes, I think so. Okay. I Do can't recall because this was happened almost two years ago. Okay, and, and if you don't recall or you don't remember the question, please just tell us that you don't recall or you don't remember the answer to the question. Um, besides Paul, was this email sent to anybody else? I don't think so, I can't recall. I didn't go back and check my emails from two years ago and see, but I, don't, I didn't think so. Would it be possible for you to go back and check your emails, provide the information to Mr. Colello, who can then provide it to Mr. Malik Schmidt? I guess I could try. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Ms. Peng, on November, I'm sorry, on November 5th at 9.27 p.m. or a.m., on your Facebook page. What year, please, Councilman? November 5th, 2018, at 9.27 a.m., on your Facebook pa page, you posted a very lengthy post of which the fourth paragraph stated, the th third, the email in question was a breakdown of the school budget and board member responsibilities. It is an informational piece that I urge to be posted to the, that I urge to be posted to the public. When you spoke about this on your Facebook page, were you, page, were you not referring to this? First, do we need to establish that she wrote that on her Facebook page? It's on her Facebook page. People can go on your Facebook page. Ms. Pang, did anyone else have access to your Facebook page? On the crowd, please. Yes. Ms. Peng, who else has access to your Facebook page? I wrote that, yes. Okay. You wrote that? Yes. Okay, and so you, you were you referring to this? Not Paul? this, yeah, to the email that I sent to Paul, yes. Not the other email. Not the email from, you know, the XXXX. The email that was, that was, that I sent to Paul, yes. Uh, Ms. Pang, um, yeah. getting back to my prior questioning, um, so you're going to let us know who, if anybody else, this email was sent to beyond Paul, correct? I could try. Okay. Um, do you know Andrew Morales? No. Okay. Do you know Cesar Suarez? No. So the, the email that was sent on October 9th, that was sent from you to Paul, and you, you also said that Jerry was at the meeting. Was Jerry included in on this email? No, no. And this meeting took place at Mr. Bagia's house, <coughs> did you say? Yeah, if I remember correctly, yes. Okay. Now you said that there were dozens of people walking in and out of the house? Yes. Okay. Do you recall the names of any of those people? I don't. Uh, we have many meetings, I can't remember them. Okay. And why was it that this meeting was done at Mr. Bagia's house if the only people that were talking about this were you, Jerry, 
and Mr. DiStefano. I'm not, Councilman, I'm not sure I understand that question, so I'm sure my client doesn't. Do you mind rephrasing? Sure. Thank you. I believe your earlier testimony was that the people that were discussing this particular pie chart and the cartoon character, uh, were you, Jerry, and Paul, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Were you sitting at a table, just the three of you, and Mr. Boggy is home? I don't recall. I remember one point we were standing up when Paul told the story. I, but it's a long meeting, long night. I, maybe sometimes we sit, sometimes we stand. So my question is, if, if only you, Paul, and Jerry were discussing what's marked for identification as Exhibit D, why did that have to be done at Mr. Bagia's home? It didn't have to. It just happened to be. Okay. Was Mr. Bagia a part of the meeting, the discussion? As I said, it's a long discussion. Maybe at part of it he was. Maybe he was not from beginning to end. I don't recall that he was there for the entire meeting. Okay. Did you, um, so you had, I guess, some involvement in the creation of what's been marked for as identification D, correct? Yeah, as I said, it's a teamwork. Were there any other um, flyers or emails uh, that you took part in during the 2017 uh, Unity Team election? No, this is the only one that I was part of it because after this I realized, you know, this is not something I'm good at. It, English is not even my native language and writing is not my specialty at all. And this is, uh, I'm, my role, as I said before, for that camp for 2017 <coughs> election is mainly grassroots campaign. I knock on doors. I was given whatever literacy and we have volunteers to knock on doors. I must have knocked over more than 500 doors. Were any other, team. sorry, were you done? Yeah. Were any other flyers or mailers uh, created on your computer? No. Ms. Pang, if I could turn your attention to what's been marked as Exhibit E. Do you, do you know who created that? No. Do you know, if you see the email address on there, it's essentially abbreviated to peopleforprogress at gmail.com, is that correct? Do you see that there at the top of the document? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize that email address? No. Do you know who controls that email address? No. Do you know anyone who is associated with People for Progress? No. And I didn't, I didn't care. Because <laughs> the, the, none of the, di oh. Literacy I distributed is, has people for progress on it. Did you ever, what was your involvement in the Unity campaign? As I said, it's grassroots campaigning. Okay. I'm a big believer in grassroots campaigning. Okay. Um, and what, did, did you have any relationship, did you know that People for Progress was sending out mailers on behalf of the Unity team? Mostly negative mailers. I think I heard that People for Progress, yeah, sometimes after some negative flyers or some came out, yeah. Can you but point to, yeah. Can you, can you point to any specific People for Progress, apart from this one, do you know, how many, of, how many mailers did you know of from People for Progress? Okay, hang on, that's, that's an incorrect statement. I, I asked for it to be stricken. Other than this one, there should be no my, my client already testified as to what E is and what D is. And if anything regarding people for progress was sent out with E or D, the testimony stands as it is, that she didn't have any knowledge of it. So I, I object to the councilman's insinuation that other than this one, the statement other than this one, what other flyers were sent out, I asked the councilman respectfully to rephrase his question. Okay. Thank you. What, just to clarify though, you knew that people for progress was sending out, you've heard of People for Progress at some point. Yes. And you knew that they were sending out perhaps positive or negative mailers. I don't know and I didn't care because that's not my concern. It's not my 
campaign, again, I was just distributing flyer on the street on knocking by knocking on the doors, whatever was given to me. But I'm pretty sure I didn't distribute any flyers sent or posted or whatever generated by people for progress. Ms. Pang, did you testify just, just a minute ago that you did know that people for progress had sent out some negative flyers? We've heard about it, yeah. And when did you hear about that? I can't pinpoint the date or time, but Was it before doing... or after the election of 2017, would you say? Probably before. And did that make you wonder who People for Progress was? Yeah, I once asked the candidates, who, but I, they were telling me it's a PAC, and I don't even know what's a PAC, so, but again, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really care. I mean, it's not my job, it's to, do that to figure out what, uh, to figure out who that is or, or to care who that is. And everybody at that point, while they're benefiting from it, didn't care who People for Progress is. And of course, uh, funny thing is, one year after the election, this name comes out much more often and everybody wants to declare they have nothing to do with it. You said everybody didn't care who People for Progress was. How do you know they didn't care? Oh, that's a wrong statement probably. I didn't care. I can't speak for anybody else. Who did you ask, do you recall? Must be one of some of the candidates. And there are to four your, candidates. I'm sorry. And to your recollection, none of them were able to tell you beyond it's a PAC. Right. Okay. That party at Jerry, at uh, the party that you referenced at Mahesh's house, do you recall the date of that party? I don't. Approximately, do you know when it was? I really don't. <laughs> I don't keep track of the, I don't have a calendar. To if I said it was October 7th, 2017, would you have any reason to dispute that? Probably not, it could be. Did you recall any conversations at that party regarding voter turnout or encouraging voters to get out and vote? No, I don't recall. Do you recall any conversations of note that were other than, or do you recall any conversations from that evening other than the ones that you've described thus far? No, I'm not sure I understand. You're talking about something I can't recall or I can't remember? No, I'm asking <laughs> what you can recall. Uh, you said that you're, you, you didn't, it was a long time ago and I think you testified it was a long time ago and you didn't quite mm -hmm. remember everything. You talked about some conversations with uh, regarding Jerry Shi and Paul DeStefano in particular, but do you recall any other conversations from that evening? No, no, it's mostly talking about the story and how do we get people to know the story. And, and the we, you only recall speaking with Jerry Shi and Paul DeStefano, although you testify that there are many other people walking in and out. Right. <coughs> okay, counsel, I just wanna make one clarification. Your statement of you know, and my client's statement of she heard are of course very distinct. Knowledge is much different than hearing something. Just wanna make sure that the record is clear that her testimony is that she heard of negative information, people speaking, didn't have any knowledge of it. Is that um, correct, Mr. Peng? Yes. Thank you, Council. Council President. Yes, uh, Ms. Peng, um, the meeting at Mahesh Bhagia's home, uh, was it a party? Was it a campaign uh, meeting? Uh, what was it? It's not a party. It's because I know the, the word party had come up a couple times. So it's not a party. What, what, explain what it is. It was just a discussion about, you know, about the campaign. Okay, but you did state that dozens of people were coming in and out. So dozens of people were coming in and out talking about the campaign? No, I don't know what they're doing. And that's <coughs> also from Paul's statement that he said the dozens of people. Well, you said it also. You said that dozens yeah, of people were coming in I and out. I said according to Paul's statement that he. Well, were people coming in and out or not? Were, were lots of people moving in and out or not? Well, define lots. Um, well, you said dozens, and that seems like a lot. A dozen, that seems yeah. a lot. A, a, a yeah. dozen? Okay. Um, beside, you mentioned Paul, you mentioned Jerry Shi, and yourself, and it's Mahesh's house. I assume he's there, correct? 
Yeah, um, and he may step out at one point, and I, I don't recall. Okay. Yeah. So out of the lots or dozens or people besides the four that we just mentioned, can you identify anybody else who was in the house that night? I don't recall, as I Councilman, said. Councilman, she's already answered that question two times. Thank you. You're welcome. Council President, I have another piece of evidence I'd like to uh, enter. If we can go back to Ms. Pang's email to Mr. DiStefano. Which would be Exhibit D for the record. Ms. Pang, I have your phone number here just because this is public information, I won't state it, but I had a screenshot text message. This was verified. And from you, it says sent, comma, from X1114. It's just the first one. I want to add your story next, comma, and a few more after maybe. This was sent at 4.48 p.m. Paul replied to you saying, I think we should take a step back and assess the situation before sending anything out. We really need to put our heads together and come up with something that is rock solid and irrefutable. That was sent at 5.04 p.m. Which date? What, do I have that? I'll find out, or Paul maybe can find out if you dig through your email, or your, your text. Excuse me, Council, what exhibit is this? It's not an exhibit, Councilor, it's no. just brought to my attention. Okay. At 5.14 p.m., while you were referring to this specific email, you said, yes, agree, comma, by the way, it won't be from Unity Team. It's just a blog. We can talk tomorrow after dinner. Smiley face. When you sent this text message acknowledging that this email will not be sent from you, it would be sent from a blog, who were you referring to or what blog were you referring to? Yeah, w one of the ideas that we bounced off during that meeting was we, how do we get this out to the parents? And I was going to create a blog, a sort of like a website thing um, that we can put the story on the website so people can see it. And what blog was this? I didn't, eventually I didn't create it because Paul didn't give me a go ahead. It's his story again. Uh, I didn't get any, that stops there. I, I, I don't have the text message, but I don't, I don't recall I did anything after that because I didn't get a go ahead. So you've acknowledged this email is coming out? No. Coming yes, you out. did, on your text message. You did. This I email came I out from you. As a matter of fact, this email came out from you. That's my email. I said in the text message, I think I don't have the text message with me. I switched phone, which I really regretted because I can't go back and see and prove what I really meant. But from what I heard, I think what I meant at that point is I was going to create a blog, a website blog, and put this story on the blog. We weren't even going to send out email to anybody. I was going to put this on the blog. But you acknowledge this email is not, you, in your own words, Ms. Pang. Yes. Yes, agree. By the way, it won't be from Unity Team, which was the team you were affiliated with. In other words, you insinuated it, this email is going to come from someone else. No, no. I mean, it's not going to be from a email at all. It's going to be an article I was going to post it on this blog. If you read furthermore, I mentioned the word blog, right? That's what I meant. And at some point after I that. I don't even know how to send out email to, a, like blast email. I don't have anybody's email address. How do I send out email? I was going to create an article on the blog, as I indicated clearly in that text message. And at some point after that text conversation was sent, would you agree, based upon Exhibit E, I think, that a similar email was sent from People for Progress? What's the question? It's, yeah, that's the fact that this, some email was sent by People for Progress. Okay. It's not so, the identical email. Okay, so just to go over the sequence of events, 
First, you had this meeting on or around October 7th with Jerry and Paul DiStefano, correct? Yes. Okay. At some point after that, on October 9th, you sent this email to Paul DiStefano, correct? Yes. Okay. At some point after that, you and Paul had a text message conversation regarding who, if anybody, this would come out from, correct? We had a discussion about that I was going <coughs> to put this on the blog, okay. but he didn't agree with it, it seems like. Okay. Well, you had a discussion about how it would get out to the people that were gonna vote, correct? Yeah, but in that text message, message there was nothing talking about an email. It was a blog. Okay. It's not an email. And at some point after that, the email <coughs> came from People for Progress to whoever it went out to, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned in your opening statement, um, and I apologize if I don't have it all correct, that's why I'm going to ask you. You mentioned that you disagreed with some of the testimony from both Ms. Maroney and Mr. DiStefano, correct? Yes. Specifically with regard to Ms. Maroney, what testimony did you disagree with? I think she said I mentioned I, I was sitting next to her in the meeting where Mr. Han and Mr. Dispano came and talked about the recess flyer. That is not true. And that meet, she said that meeting happens this year, 2019. <coughs> we can go back and look at all the videotapes. I don't think Mr. Han or Mr. Dispano ever come to this year's Board of Ed meeting. And I was not sitting next to her in any of the meeting last year. So. The portion of Ms. Maroney's testimony that you disagree with is her testimony with regard to the a dates. meeting that took place where she overheard a conversation between you, Mr. DiStefano, and Mr. Hahn? No. If you go back to look at her testimony, she said, I admitted to her about some, something about people for progress. What was that? That's not true. What Why was that? Why what was, what was Ms. Maroney's it? testimony? Why don't you go back and look at her testimony? I don't know, you said <laughs> that you disagree with it. So I'm asking you, what part of it do you disagree with? She said I was sitting next to her, I admitted to her that I created some People for Progress flyer, which is not true. Okay, and you also said that you disagree with some of Mr. DiStefano's testimony, is that correct? Right. Now, besides what we've already spoken about, um, was there any other testimony from Mr. DiStefano that you disagree with or take issue with? Yeah, okay. One, um, I think Mr. DiStefano said that in th that meeting in um, Mahesh's house, I brought my own laptop and showed him something. That's not possible because I'm a computer science major. I'm a professional computer engineer. My laptop is equipped with big memory and <coughs> hard drive. It's very heavy. I don't like to bring it with me. Actually, I don't think anybody in the campaign ever see me bring my own laptop. I don't even know if they, he can tell what my, what my laptop, what brand or color of my laptop. That's not true. The second thing is he said after this email that's sent to him, two days later the, the email sent to the parents was out. It's not two days later, right? We all see it's a week, almost a week. It's October, between October 9th and October 16th. How is that two days later until, unless he knows something in between? I don't think that's two days later. Okay, now you've, you, you testified earlier that um, what's being pictured, I believe it's Exhibit D, if we can go back to Exhibit D. You testified earlier that that was, well, the email at least was created on your computer, correct? Yeah. Was that your laptop computer or was that another computer? It's probably my laptop computer. Okay. Did you have your laptop with you during the October 7th meeting where no. you looked up these pie charts and? No. Okay, was there a computer being used to look and go over the pie charts that were being depicted as Exhibit D? Probably, yeah, I okay. think so. Do you know whose computer was being used? No, I don't. Well, it had to be either Jerry or Paul's, correct? Because those are the only three people that you were meeting with? No, there were more people in the meeting. Yeah. Well, you, you, you testified earlier that the only three people that were 
discussing this email were you, Jerry, and Paul, correct? Yeah. Okay. So. But we could be using someone else's computer. I don't know. Okay. So you don't remember whose computer you were using? Is I, that your testimony? I don't know. I, okay. I don't know. Be, not, not that I don't remember. I did, don't know whose computer that is. Okay. Um, now, obviously, we're here tonight with regard to the 2017 racist flyer. What, if anything, do you know with regard to the 2017 racist flyer? Besides it's despicable and disgusting, nothing. Okay. Did you uh, take any part in the creating of the 2017 racial flyer? No. Did you take any part in uh, the mailing or disbursement of the 2017 racial flyer? No. Okay. Um, I'll let some other uh, council people go. Council President, um, mm -hmm. just for a point of clarification uh, for the, for myself too, and, and I know the people here tonight and the people who are, will view this, um, a, a lot of talk has been about uh, people for progress. Uh, can we get some explanation? Because people for progress is, you know, what is it? So. Can we get some explanation, perhaps from um, uh, Ms. Pang or somebody here or what, one of the council people? I, I couldn't tell you about it because I don't know about it. So what, what is it? Yeah, uh, I actually put this together and just want to be clear that the, these are the facts that we know so far, um, not just for people for progress, but regarding this racist fire as well. There were six minorities running during this election on different slates. Only two of which were singled out on this flyer. They happened to both be on the same slate, the unity team. The mailing addresses listed were not EDDM, which means every door direct mail. It was a specific purchased list as per the testimony from Mr. Comer. They were, it was a highly targeted voter mailing list and we have learned that an erroneous, mysterious, perhaps fictitious political action committee named People for Progress had significant involvement in this campaign. Ms. Peng has stated that she has no involvement at all with People for Progress as we just went into an argument about for the last 30 minutes, or discussion about over the last 30 minutes. Through at least five different verified mailers and mass emails, this group sent negative mailers and mass emails targeting those against the unity team. The intention of People for Progress is clear with the various evidence that we have that the intention for People for Progress was to have the unity team win. These are irrefutable facts that we do know. So we also know that the, ele the election law enforcement documents that were filed showed that People for Progress never filed the documents properly that were required to be filled by law. This itself is an election law enforcement violation. And we have also received evidence now, especially from Mr. Comer, that Cesar Suarez, which Mr. Comer gave to us today, which is listed as restricted information. Cesar Suarez, who lives at, am I allowed to say the address of this individual? It doesn't matter. I think it was the Okay, so Cesar Suarez is tied to people for progress. These are the irrefutable facts that we now know, and it's, it's very, 
that's that's where we're at as far as this investigation is concerned. Well, anything else, sir? We we also have. We also have that People for Progress, the mailers that went out and the checks that we had were handwritten as Andres Morales. Sometimes the mailers went out as A. Period Morales. Sometimes they went out as Andrew Morales. We can't confirm whether this individual exists. However, we do know that Cesar Suarez exists and was listed on the P.O. box itself. We've also obtained checks that were allegedly signed by Andres Morales. Um, if it is confirmed that this person does not exist, which many people have felt, then bank fraud was also committed throughout this whole process. Those are the irrefutable facts that we know so far. Is, is there anyone else uh, with information about People for Progress, anything they can share? Any council people want to ask any questions about People for Progress or share any, any information about People for Progress? Councilman Deal. Yes, sir. The, and I am confused with People for Progress, and thank you, Councilman Joshi, for that. Um, what is the history of People for Progress? Is this the only campaign they've been involved with? Is there a history of People for Progress? Can you run that? Um, I believe Mr. Comer, oh, Mr. Comer provided us with the application date. It said September 19th, 2017, and he stated the address or the date that was closed was April 11th of 2018. So People for Progress was during that time. There's no other history before that date was ever used for any other campaign? As far as this P.O. box is concerned, I only have what the federal agent Comer gave me right now. Okay, and going back to the bank for Morales, when he opened up that, can we get records of him opening up that account? And he must have had a driver's license. I mean, you have to have, you can't just open up an account without Yeah, we, we can, we, uh, I would look forward to subpoenaing that too. Is that something we can get our, we have access to that? We have the authority to subpoena the bank evidence or bank information. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Bang, I just have a question and please correct me if I'm wrong. You said that you did not know how to do a blast email or you said you didn't know how to do a, a blast email or a, I don't. And, but um, you mentioned also your profession is a software engineer? Yes, and obviously you're not because software engineer does not mean you write, you, you send out email. That's totally two different things. No, I understand that, but it's a software application. Not judging, just clarifying. That's all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And for people for work progress, I, I just have one question. This so-called evidence exist since October 2017. Why people waited an entire year until 2018, October 2018, right before the, another election, to submit this? Cal Council and President? why another, which, uh, then after that, it's quiet down again, nobody seems to care anymore. And now, half a year later, right before June election, this was brought up again, and I'm betting this is gonna come out again in November election. I mean, is this really an investigation or is this is a, a, a political game? Yeah, I, I, I think really when we call sure. in a federal agent, I think when a federal agent comes in and testifies voluntarily, it's, there's no political component to it. He has no reason to be. He walked out the side of this room. All he did was hand us a couple of documents and no. I've been pushing for this since I was sworn in, in no, January I mean, of 2018. This email was sent to Paul in 2017. 
and people have been talking about people for progress and all that, and he has all this information, why waited an entire year until 2018 to dig this out? Council President? Yes, sir. Um, there's a lot of people in this room who have attended or watched these council meetings for the past year and a half. The council meeting after the flyer went out, I protested about the flyer, its existence, its delivery. Mm -hmm. I said that we were going to investigate it and we can go right back to the council meeting after the election where this flyer came out and we put it in the hands of the Edison Police Department. And I called the Edison Police Department and all of this you know is record because just about at every council meeting, at every work session for the last year and a half during my discussion items, I brought up the progress of the racial flyer. I was asked by residents, where are you with that racial flyer? What have you done? And we put it in the hands of the Edison Police Department, who I contacted, and they would say, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're not getting much cooperation, nobody's answering our questions. Nobody's cooperating. Nobody's coming forward. Nobody's saying anything. All right? I spoke to the chief of police. The police said, the AG's office has taken it over. Okay, if that's the case. And we were patient for another period of time. Because in my mind, I thought if the AG's office takes it over, we're going to solve this thing. As you can see, there's lots of bits and pieces here. And we are not the FBI up here. And if the AG's office, a professional law enforcement agency, is taking this over, we were good with that. And we waited, and we asked for updates, and we waited, and we asked for updates for over a year. We were frustrated. We sent a letter from our attorney to the AG's office. Where are you? What are you doing? And at that point, at some point, again, this is record. Anybody can look at it. At some point, we said, we are going to form a committee of the whole. If the Edison Police Department, and I'm not saying anything about the Edison Police Department, that investigation was taken from them. If that investigation is taken from them by the AG's office, and the AG isn't going to do anything, at some point, a year and a half later, we're going to form the Committee of the Hall. And we did that in February. We did that in February. It takes time to find lawyers and organize yourselves. So here we are, and I've heard this a couple times now. We are where the, we're, we're before an election. And I, I, I want to ask this question. Is there any good time or better time to find out what happened? Do we have to wait to find out what happened? Because there's an election in June and there's an election in November and there'll be an election next year. There's always an election. If you are a person sitting at home in Edison and you don't know a single person in this room and you don't vote, but you see this racist flyer on television and it, you're disturbed by it, do you necessarily care when the investigation starts? Do you necessarily care that it's before a certain date or after a certain date? Wouldn't you be just interested, because you don't have a vested interest, you're just interested in finding out who's responsible. That's why when I hear things like, it's done for political purposes, I've been working on this, we've been working on this for over a year. There's nothing to hide there, this is all public <coughs> record. There's no good time or better time to catch an individual responsible. If, if you're sitting at home and you don't know a single person involved here, you don't know a single person, you don't even vote, but you see it on television and you're disturbed by it, why would you criticize the Committee of the Whole? Why would you do that? I'm sitting at home, I don't know anybody, I don't know anything about, I don't vote, there's this flyer and I hear that there's a committee that the council is forming to get to the bottom of it. Somebody's got to tell me that's a bad idea. Somebody's got to tell me that's a bad idea. And I'm saying that tonight because I listen to the testimony and I listen to the criticism and I don't understand the criticism. 
If you're genuine and sincere about getting to the bottom of it, why are you saying the Committee of the Whole is a bad idea? Why are you saying it's political when it is not? Why are you saying it's a bad time to do it because it's before an election? There's always an election. And I don't know if we solved this thing. I don't think we solved this thing tonight, but guess what? Just like I've stated over a year, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We have another meeting set up in June. We'll be back in June. We'll set up another meeting. We'll continue to bring in witnesses. We'll do what our counselor said before with the subpoenas. We'll follow this up. We will follow this up because this is an interesting case. Is it not, is it not curiouser and curiouser? Uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. It's hard to understand for people for progress. Okay, as it, as it was explained, it's this group out there that puts out these flyers. They put them out for the Unity BOE team to help the BOE team. That's, that's pretty, that's kind of common knowledge. Nobody here has said they know anything about the, the um, people for progress. Nobody's come forward, nobody knows anything about it. Well, I know a little bit about it, okay? Cesar Suarez, correct, is the one who signed for the PO box. He did have a, excuse me, sir, excuse me. Cesar Suarez was the one who signed the P.O. box. He lived at 304 Hannah Road, but now he lives at 251 Sutton's Lane in Edison. He doesn't own that house, he rents it. It's owned by A.J. Kumar Patil. A.J., I don't know if, if this is the same A.J. that I have, but that's what it says here. Do you know Cesar Suarez? He, he's my tenant, sir. And I have sir, a long, sir, please. long dispute with this guy. I'm sorry, sir? I have the long pending dispute with this guy, so I can't comment. You, you can't comment? Well, do you want to swear yourself in? If you want me to swear in, then I would like to have the Mayor Tom Lanky to swear in. We, we can do that, too. And, and multiple people we, to swear we, in. I think we can have anybody. I'm willing to swear in. Absolutely. Okay, I'll swear in that there was no cooperation between these two campaigns, which, by the way, was inferred. There was no cooperation between the campaigns. I'll swear, publicly swear, I knew nothing about People for Progress. Who else can do that? Can you? I will definitely do that, sir, after the elections are over. I'll be the first witness if you want. In the crowd, please. Sir, sir, please. Any other questions or comments? Council President, if we could have another minute of a recess, um, I, I would like a, at least another minute or two just to break. Okay. Is Ms. T Pang still needed, Councilman and women? I have no further questions for Ms. Payne. I have no, further, sure I have no further questions. No further questions. But um, Mr. before we break, Mr. Colello, I know you also, I understand you also represent Mr. Boggia I'll and Mr. Speak Shea. Speak. I'll speak. You'll get with Mr. I Malik will. Schmidt. I did hear the announcements and I will. I just have one, um, I just have one thing to say. Um, I appreciate the indulgent, indulgence, pardon me. Um, I heard Rivera versus City Elizabeth cited when I first came in and um, as far as I know, elections are political. That's what they are. That's how our process works. And I heard, I don't know whether it was the chair or another council person say that this, this case, as in Rivera, is an election issue. I think that is what was said. Um, I'd just like to take note of that. And you know, your jurisdiction in this case was taken because it, from what I understood from the opening comments, was taken because it is an election issue. It's not a BOE issue, and I think you made, made a differentiation with Rivera versus City of Elizabeth, which I appreciated. So um, I'd just like to say, um, Councilman, I will speak to Council and um, discuss the other um, individuals about which letters were written, and it was indeed a pleasure, and good luck to everyone in your investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before the break, can I add something? Because I think I'm going to be excused, right? Um, I, I wasn't questioning about the timing of the investigation. I was only questioning about the email that was sent 
2017 and was submitted a year after. And I just want to add something that I run my own campaign 2016. I didn't have any party support. I didn't get any donations or, or endorsement from any parties, any unions. All my campaign fund is around $20,000, all from personal donations. And I was the only minority woman in that election, but I never use any card, any woman card, any minority card. I believe people should be elected because of who they are, not because of the gender or race. All I have is hundreds of parents who wants to make the school better. And we knocked more than 10,000 doors in <coughs> Edison. That's how I won. I never agreed with racist liar, and this is not how campaign should be run from my point of view. And I just want to add something else. You know, um, we all know overcrowding is a big issue here. And I, I think we, we want we to work on something to like that. Stick to testimony that's related to the racist flyer. Yeah, we right, will need to stick to the testimony, ma'am. We allow it all once. Right. Thank you. Oh, I, I do want to add something else. While I, I have all the elected officials here, all right? I've, I've recently seen some flyers sent out by, I, think, I believe, if, if I remember correctly, by column A. And which is really this has disturbing. nothing to do with the racist flyer. It has whatsoever. to stick with the racial it's, flyer, please. Please keep the campaign clean, okay? Well, thank you for your time, ma'am. Through council president, before we break, do I know why uh, this particular person was, we did not send a letter, Mr. Suez, whatever the, his name is, or the letter or the subpoena? So that you will know what exactly the story is, rather than well, pointing the fingers. Yeah, no, no pointing of fingers. Let's find out the truth. Yes. Let's have people come and testify. Correct. Like I opened up with my statement tonight. Last week we invited ten people. Five came. Why is that? If you have nothing to hide, if you have no affiliation, if you don't have a vested interest, if you want to get to the bottom of it, you show up and, and you say what you have to say. So, yeah, we're just looking for the truth. If you have Absolutely. the truth, let's go. No, you, you should call this person. We will. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you, sir. Get the testimony from that person, Thank and you, you will know the truth. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. We'll have a two-minute <coughs> two recess. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. We are resuming the meeting. Uh, Thank you again all for coming out tonight. This meeting will continue. We are not closing this meeting out. It will be a continuation on June 27th. So again, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you.